There's a line of thinking I've seen a lot lately that assumes that a wide variety of experiences is something we mostly enjoy in modern gaming, something that arrived thanks to an increased number of games being made overall. And to be sure, we enjoy a very wide array of experiences now, an almost overwhelming amount, thanks to the accessibility of game development to a wider variety of teams and the decreased cost of creating a game in general. However, there have always been some games well outside of the norm, offering different experiences you won't find pretty much anywhere else. And Devil Dice is one of those games from the PlayStation 1. Before we dive into talking about the specifics of all of Devil Dice's different modes, a quick primer on how it functions at its core. At its simplest, most basic level, you play as a character, which the game refers to as a devil, in a world full of dice. When you're on top of a die, walking around turns it from one face of the die to another. When you're on the ground, you can push dice into different positions. The goal is generally to make the dice disappear, which you do by lining up the number of dice on the side of a die with the number of dice that are together in a group. So, for example, if you line up three dice that are all showing three, they'll disappear. It's a reasonably simple mechanic that the game executes on brilliantly. Devil Dice actually has a very in-depth tutorial that teaches you how the game's mechanics and modes work, which is certainly very welcome, because Devil Dice can be an incredibly fast and overwhelming game in some of its modes. It really can quickly just get to you in terms of speed and just stuff going on. A text manual, like the one that's actually included with the game, is not nearly as effective as demonstrating or explaining the mechanics. Because while it's true that at its heart Devil Dice is a puzzle game, especially when it comes to its puzzle mode, which is a very slow-paced affair that really requires you to think before you make any moves, many of its other modes embrace the trends of the time, where we're certainly seeing a shift to a large number of puzzle games they were becoming more focused on action. Things started getting timed quite aggressively. The perfect example would be the puzzle mode in Tetris Plus, which was constantly putting time pressure on you. Not something you'd usually associate with Tetris, either then or now. Probably the most important mechanic to wrap your head around in Devil Dice is just as understanding how a die is constructed. It helps immensely to know what number is going to be facing up when you turn a die in any given direction. This can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but you eventually get into a groove as time goes on. The puzzle mode can actually be really helpful here, and can make sure that you're able to learn how to think this way and really learn some neat tricks before you jump into some of the other more intense modes. Now, that puzzle mode is certainly the most fun part of the game if you're only going to be playing as a solo player. It goes as slow as you want it to go. The field doesn't fill up, there's no other characters trying to murder you. You have all the time you want to figure out exactly how to turn the dice in the number of moves you want to. And there are a ton of levels in this for you to think your way through. The first hundred were handcrafted by designers, and the other thousand were randomly generated before the game shipped, which is to say every disc had the same random levels. A truly random puzzle mode would have been great, but I'm sure they wanted to make sure that everything they were shipping with the game was solvable, which is fair. A modern version of the game could have daily puzzles fed into it from the internet, but that just wasn't a possibility at the time, and a thousand puzzles is more than enough for the vast majority of players, I'm sure. Another mode I had a ton of fun with solo was the Endless Trial mode. While this mode doesn't impose a time limit, hence the Endless moniker, it does end once the playfield fills up with dice very much like how a game of Tetris ends when you get to the top. Basically, it's a good middle ground between the intense multiplayer modes and the nice, calm puzzle mode. It puts some amount of pressure on you without overwhelming you, and its score-based nature can add to its replayability if you're into high score chasing or have a group of people to compete with in that arena. 
but let's get to where the real craziness starts. Battle mode is the first of the multiplayer modes, which has you basically playing tug of war with number based combos. Each player has four boxes at the top of the screen. Every time you pull off a combo with a given number, that number gets added to your set of boxes. The first player to get to four of those boxes full wins. Now the twist is that a number can only appear once across all eight boxes. This adds an element of chaos, but also an element of strategy, since you can choose to either go for something your opponent already has or something they don't. If they're way ahead of you, you're likely going to want to try and steal something of theirs, but creating something totally new might be the only way you can win, especially if you're close to doing so. This mode ended up being a surprising amount of fun, even with an AI opponent. The constant fighting over the dice themselves, as well as which combos are being done, combined to make a delightfully messy mode. The final mode is definitely the most chaotic by far, though. Wars is the most directly antagonistic multiplayer mode in the game, and it's all the better for it. While the other modes are generally about being able to make the combos faster than your opponents, Wars is about directly murdering them by getting them on the ground and running them over with dice. There's some slight nuance to this, since you can increase the damage you do by making combos with certain numbers and restoring health with other certain combos. But with up to five players on the field all trying to run each other over, a lot of that nuance rapidly vanishes into chaos. Those five players manage to turn wars into a wild mess of humanity in a way that reminds me a lot of the just sheer unhinged levels that you'd see in Bomberman. Of course, much like Bomberman at its absolute height, not a lot of people would have played this mode with all humans, especially since it required a multi-tap, a very rarely used accessory that allowed plugging in more than the usual two controllers that the PS1 supported. Like battle mode though, it's still a decent bit of fun with AI opponents, though not quite as fun as it is with other people all screaming and yelling and running around. With all those modes, Devil Dice does a fantastic job of keeping you engaged and having fun for way longer than you'd expect from a puzzle game of this era. There's a mode for every mood you might be in. To get the most enjoyment out of battle and wars, you'll probably want to have some other players on hand, but I think the hours I got out of exploring the puzzle mode and setting high scores in trial mode are worth the price of admission on their own. Devil Dice is absolutely a game that still holds up today and still ranks among some of the best puzzle games out there. Whether you're looking for single player or multiplayer fun, it's well worth picking up.